There are heroes out there. You may not recognize them hiding in the trees, but they are there. Agents doing their job with skill and strength, wielding the most advanced technology, fighting foes, managing our resources for the service of humanity. They are the heroes of the forest. Want to be a hero? Let's go. Into the outdoors. Grab your gear and let's explore. The Division of Forestry is just one branch of the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, but their network is vast, extending to urban and Northwoods environments. We've been called the headquarters for a special mission. They're seeking and recruiting agents with a diverse set of skills and interests. She said she would come to us. Wait, what's that? Welcome to the woods. I'm so glad you came. I'm Heather Birklin, Chief State Forester for the Wisconsin DNR. Wisconsin DNR, Division of Forestry, is the central hub. We connect and network with collaborative partnerships across the state in the forestry profession. There are many career opportunities within the forestry network. We all have one common goal, and that's to sustainably manage our forests for the economical, ecological, social, and cultural benefits for all of us today and for the future. That's so important. Our forests provide so much for us, and they're beautiful. They are beautiful, but they also provide so much more, from wildlife habitat to recreation. They provide us clean air, clean water, Having a diverse forest provides us with such diverse resources and products. We need diverse agents from all backgrounds to provide different perspectives and unique values that can move forestry to the future. Your mission is to seek out other young agents, to connect them to other forestry organizations and partners, to train them to be future heroes of forestry. Yes, Chief, we won't let you down. Let's go. Do you want to fly? There's a job for that. Fight fires? They do that too. Got the brains to counterattack disease and pestilence? You are needed. Are you a whiz kid that loves technology and programming? Then bring your A-game. Our forest needs you. Let's go meet some top agents in the field. Actually, the forest. My name is Brad Hutnick. I'm a silviculturist with the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources Division of Forestry. STEM skills are really critical to what we do in the silviculture program, science, technology, engineering, and math. Under science, that might be closely aligned with biology. And so we need to learn or to identify the different plants we find on sites. And if we can tell what the plants are, we can learn a lot about how the trees are gonna grow on that site and how they may have problems on that site. So it's really informative to us. We're looking for problems when you look up at the trees right here. The trees that are kind of, they have that little blonding on the bark, it's almost like a, the woodpeckers are stripping off the bark. Those are, those are ash trees that have been killed by emerald ash borer. And so we have a couple over here, we have a couple over there, and you can see that we're probably gonna see more in the future. Technology is also important in the silviculture program. So we're gonna be looking at GIS or geographic information systems to give us that landscape scale and we use uh, GPS systems all the time to kind of tell us where we are or where we can locate things. And our goal as sustainable foresters and sustainable silviculturists is to provide those forests to future generations as good or not better than what we found them in. I'm a forest ranger, as you can see by my uniform today. I help prevent wildfires and help extinguish wildfires, so that's part of my job. And then I'll go out in the field and either do inventory or take some tree marking paint with me and go set up a timber sale in a certain area. Forestry is more than just trees. It's a whole ecosystem management. So I think there's a lot of 
room for people that have very diverse interests. You could sit in an office and digitize stuff on an aerial photo to help a forester on the ground set up a timber sale. I mean, there, there's a lot of different things within forestry that don't involve being out in the woods. Each day is different as a forester on public land. Uh, I could be out just in the forest by myself, you know, measuring trees and collecting data. And there are days spent in the office as well, you know, summarizing data or using geographic information systems. I think every day is a fun day. It's something new. Uh, nothing is ever, ever the same. You get to meet new people. You can travel. I took some trips across the state for fire suppression this year. And I was able to meet people from other parts of the state, able to see other parts of the state. And you get to do stuff like that while working. So my role as a forest health specialist is I identify insect and disease issues that are impacting our forests. So if kids are interested in nature, if they like insects, if they like fungi, if they like looking at little things, trying to figure out why something died or why something grew where it did, if that's the thing that they really enjoy, I would really recommend going into the sciences field. And one of those might be natural resources and entomology. So I really want to make sure that you today know that we need and want foresters from all different kinds of backgrounds and places. The first thing that I really tell them to do is to go on to our current kind of DNR jobs. It's actually statewide, but DNR website that shows all of the careers. To me, that's a really good starting point for people to understand the variety of the careers that we do, the diversity of things that we do, and really kind of to open their mind to all of the different opportunities that there are for careers. There are a lot of options and there's not just one necessary pathway that you can take to get there. Not all forestry professionals work in the woods or up in trees. There are important roles for agents who work in offices and labs, using technology and computers to research and analyze data, engineer new equipment, manufacture, and design wood products. Some even do research from planes or flying drones. My name is Amanda Furkus, and I am a CAD specialist for the Department of Natural Resources Division of Forestry. Um, my job is to draw and design and create blueprints of all the parts and pieces that we make for our fire trucks. Um, all of our designs come from the need of the field. So if there's a specific tool they need to carry, um, we'll design something to hold that. If there's a certain amount of water they need to carry, we'll design a tank for that. Certain pumps, we'll design mounts for all of that. We use a program for CAD, which is Computer Aided Design and Drafting. It allows me to use the computer to create 3D models of parts and then turn them into the actual blueprints used to create the parts in real life. Do you use any STEM skills on the job? Engineering is 90% of what I do, and of course engineering involves all sorts of math. Can you show something you're working on? These are our Type 4 bodies. This um, here would be the frame. And that bolts to the chassis itself and then all of these along the edge here are compartments um, that are designed for those specific tools that are required to be carried on this vehicle. Here's the designs from the computer in real life. This is amazing. And this is Grant, our superintendent. Hi, I'm the site superintendent here at uh, LeMay, our uh, research and development facility here in Tomahawk. We strive to bring a lot of innovation to our equipment here at the LeMay Forestry Center, uh, both to make sure that our operators can effectively firefight and also to keep them safe. So here we have an example of a piece of equipment that goes out to firefighting jobs. And this back here is a fire break. This is where engineering can help decide what configurations of you know, shapes and geometries work the best to make that piece of equipment live. My name is Courtney Klaus. I'm the Geographic Systems Team Leader for the Division of Forestry at Wisconsin DNR. I work with a group of GIS professionals, and GIS is Geographic Information Systems, and that is essentially the management of spatial data. Um, so we work to analyze, create data, manage that data, and create maps. Our forestry staff and partners will collect information out in the field about the forest. 
And then they can come back and use some applications that we develop within the Wisconsin DNR to collect that information and to display it and be able to look at connections between that information. One of the special things that we do when we fly aerial photography is we fly it so that we can cut, capture it in stereo, which basically means it's in 3D. So a forester can use these two prints, overlay them, and using a particular stereoscope, it's called, they can actually look at the trees in 3D and additionally help them get information about the forest, not only helping them, again, differentiate different types of species, but also be able to potentially make some get some information such as height and maybe even the health of the forest just by looking at the photos. My name is Paul Christensen. I'm a pilot for the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources based out of Siren, Wisconsin. So as a pilot for Wisconsin DNR, we're responsible for uh, supporting uh, not only forestry, but wildlife and fire and all aspects of the DNR and the state of Wisconsin with their aviation needs. So we do a lot of wildlife surveys. Uh, we do a lot of uh, picture taking from the air, but our really our most important mission is to support the fire program with the DNR and to keep Wisconsin safe from wildland fires during the spring and the summer and the fall. We do all kinds of aerial supports. We do search and rescues. We do wildlife surveys. We take pictures of cows. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a couple of these airplanes we actually use to, uh, to, to reseed forests after sustainable harvest. Yeah, it's a neat tool. And when you get in there, it's like wearing your cape. It's part of your body. You move left, the airplane moves left, and you can really get in tune with it, and you can do a lot of great work real quick. So it's fun. Our forests provide materials to build and create products we use every day. But did you know that harvesting trees is also important to maintain the health and regeneration of forests? Students at the Wood Technology Center of Excellence get hands-on training on state-of-the-art equipment that prepares them for jobs in Wisconsin's forest industry. My name is Logan Wells. I am the Wood Science Instructor for North Central Technical College at the Wood Technology Center of Excellence here in Anago, Wisconsin. What's really cool about the Wood Technology Center is that it's linked very strongly to our industry um, and different companies and facilities that use wood. Um, both from a research and development standpoint, we do testing for new products, but then we also do training. So whether it's for safety um, or other industry skill sets like hardwood lumber grading, um, kiln drying lumber, we do different industry classes with both the Department of Natural Resources as well as other industry associations. When we talk about hardwood lumber, we use our hardwood trees for products that we see. So aesthetic applications for the most part. So think furniture, right? Tables, cabinets, kitchen cabinets. Um, when we look at softwood lumber, so our pines, red pine especially here in Wisconsin, that's gonna be used for dimensional lumber. So think two by fours, two by sixes, the studs that are in your house uh, or for other construction purposes. So one technology is what's called optimized equipment. When we use the word optimized, it means we've got different computerized sensors. So think uh, cameras, x-rays, lasers that are able to identify defects in lumber um, and then remove that with a saw. Would you like to go for a tour and see some of the pieces of equipment? Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Let's go over here and check out the CNC router. So what a CNC router does is it cuts out individual patterns that you design on a computer. So that's the computer numerically controlled part. So if we look at this sign on the wall here, see how all those letters and shapes, those are designed on the computer, and then that code is programmed into this router. And this router has a different set of tools that are used for engraving and cutting out different shapes. So you can see in here, that little wheel, all of those different bits, we call them, are plugged in and used for different uh, cutting paths and cutting features. So this equipment here, what it's allowing us to do is to cut out really cool shapes and intricate designs. Could you imagine doing this all by hand? How long that would take you if you were gonna hand route it out? So that's why we have this technology in our shop. So how would a young person be trained to become a hero of the forest? Let's check out these training programs and talk with a few instructors. The Blackwell Job Corps offers education and trade training in partnership with the U.S. Forest Service. This program in Leona, Wisconsin has a wildfire and forestry specialization.
Hey guys, my name is Jeremy Erickson. I am the Job Corps Assistant Fire Management Officer here at the Blackwell Job Corps Center in Leona, Wisconsin. So Blackwell is connected to the U.S. Forest Service because it's based here on the Shawamigan Nicolay National Forest in northern Wisconsin, and it's a partnership between the U.S. Forest Service and the Department of Labor. So our program is a lot like a college program. It's a two-year program. The purpose of this program is to get students into these careers in natural resources. One of the ways that we get that accomplished is through these forestry technician jobs. They get some forestry background, they get some fire background, and some heavy equipment background too, so that they can work for not only the U.S. Forest Service, but the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, a number of the tribes that are here in, uh, here in Wisconsin, and like I said, as well as anywhere else in the U.S. So we do have students that are out west right now in Oregon. Um, they're helping with, uh, it's called a camp crew. So we send them out there, it's about 15 students right now, and basically they assist getting the supplies to the firefighters, which is just as important as helping put the fire out. So do you only work on active fires or do you also help prevent them? We help prevent them as well, Lucas. Suppression activities is when we put the active fire out and then there's the pre-suppression activities where we go to prevent the fire. A lot of that involves going out in the forest and doing prescribed burning where we intentionally light the landscape up to make sure that it benefits the forest. Um, we'll also use bulldozers and skid steers to mechanically um, reduce the fuels in the forest and we also uh, work with our good friend Smokey Bear to go out there and get the message to individuals like only you can prevent wildfires. Did you know that forests aren't only found in rural wild areas? We also have urban forests found in city parks. Even the trees in your yard or neighborhood can help contribute to the health and beauty of our environment. And human health too. It's so important that we take care of them. We're here in Milwaukee with heroes in training who are learning how to care for and manage our urban forests. Hi, my name is August Hoppy, and I am uh, an arborist. Arborists make huge impacts every day to our healthy, sustainable forests. So um, pruning trees properly so they have good structure. We do planting, so planting to increase our urban forests. Uh, doing treatments to protect vulnerable trees. We're going through an emerald ash borer crisis right now. And every day we're sending technicians out to treat ash trees to protect them. And trees that are in the city need a little more care than trees out in the woods. Uh, they're more vulnerable and with humans around and impacts that people have, it's more important than ever to take care of our trees that are in our cities. Uh, we take a lot of pride in what we do for the urban forest. I think we're the original green industry and we love it. Our apprenticeship program is a really awesome thing. It's the first arborist apprenticeship program in the nation. So we have people that um, have a love for outdoors. Uh, we have people just out of high school and they want to try something new for the first time. Uh, we also have people that have been in the industries for a little bit and want a change of career too. They don't like being working in a factory or working inside and they want to try something new. So um, that's where apprenticeship is really great because we have the training program. They know they can get the skills uh, by entering into the apprenticeship. Hi, my name is Brian Wall. I work for the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Um, I am an urban forestry coordinator. And basically what I do is I work with municipalities to help them manage their urban forest. In general, municipalities are really only managing about 15% of the urban forest. The other 85%, that's you. That's homeowners. It's the trees in your backyard. One thing we really need to concentrate on is, yeah, we need to plant trees for sure. But one of the bigger things is, we need to preserve the trees we have. Because a tree like these mature trees here, you know, one of these trees is worth 40 or 100 newly planted trees. So it's very important to preserve the ones we have. How does one become an arborist? There are many ways to get into the field. There are four-year colleges in Wisconsin. There are two-year colleges that offer a degree. And there's a Wisconsin Arborist Apprenticeship Program where you can earn while you learn. My name's Ian Brown. I'm an urban forestry district manager with the city of Milwaukee. My role is basically to work with our community and our staff to not only beautify, but also increase the benefits of, of urban life and urban living because of the canopy that we provide. From a benefit perspective, they're, they're intercepting stormwater, so that helps to reduce stormwater impacts when we have heavy rain events, and that's something that's especially important in the Milwaukee area. When you're talking about property values, they can increase property values anywhere from five to 15%. So if you think about what is a home worth, 
Um, when you have trees that are present on the property, that can be a significant um, add both to the tax base as well as the value to the individual homeowner. Now from a public health perspective, you have uh, trees that are both generating oxygen, but they're eliminating or filtering fine particulate matter. So also in a community like Milwaukee that has a lot of childhood asthma issues, urban trees actually help to filter the air to make our living situation better for those citizens that are here. So far, we've investigated the training and opportunities for superheroes of the forest, but who are gonna be the next heroes? Where are we gonna find them? I'm glad you've asked. The truth is, anyone can be a hero. I'm Karina Gonzalez, I'm project coordinator for Cream City Conservation Corps, and what I do is I hire people of color, youth, and women, and we introduce them to the conservation field. I like to think of us as an ice cream shop uh, where they get to sample uh, different areas of the field and we do this so that we can spark an interest in them. We also do this so that they have experience and certifications and qualifications to get them to the door of these bigger conservation companies so that they're not turned away for being underqualified. Why is diversity important in the field of natural resources? This is everyone's land and it's important to represent that and so it's important that everyone understands that they have a place in protecting our natural resources. Oftentimes, environmental issues like air pollution hit the black, brown, and indigenous communities first. And so, of course, we care. It's not that there's a lack of interest, it's that there's a lack of open doors. Why is it important for all youth to have experiences in natural environments? Well, our youth are our future conservationists, and so it's important to get them out there now so that when they become everyday consumers and they go out into careers, they understand the importance of our natural resources. Native Americans have been practicing forest stewardship for centuries. Many tribal leaders and young people are sharing ideas and collaborating through programs like the Sustainable Development Institute at the College of Menominee Nation. Hi, my name is Rebecca Edler and I'm the interim director of the Sustainable Development Institute at the College of Menominee Nation. The mission of the Institute is to share the Menominee story of sustainability. We look back into the history of Chief Oshkosh's direction as to how the forest should be managed. How do your students work in the field of forestry? We offer internships. So our, our institute, as well as the college, will work with other entities within the tribe. We will write research grants, depending upon what the need is. And then our students will link up with the foresters, with MTE, with faculty members or other individuals, and they will develop projects, and then they will work with these individuals to um, complete research opportunities. And why do I think it's important for young people to go into natural resources? I would say because this is your world. If you don't take care of it, who's going to? Our people have been doing this for generations and what we do today can affect seven generations later. We want our kids and grandchildren and all the generations to appreciate this forest. As foresters on Menominee, we have a responsibility, a long-term management strategy that's important that we look not only towards what was done in the past, but look towards the future. Uh, we have to make sure the natural resources are intact and in, the integrity is there so that um, we can manage a sustainable system that's gonna continue for future generations. My name is Michaeli Duquesne. I'm a GIS and inventory forester for Menominee Tribal Enterprises. In 2014, I did an internship with the Sustainable Development Institute with College of Menominee Nation where we installed a tree census. We get to pick what we want to grow in this forest. We could just let it go and do whatever it wants. But if you think of it kind of like a garden, except for instead of harvesting it at the end of summer, you harvest it in 40, 80, maybe even 120 years. And it's just a really awesome opportunity to be able to work at forestry and have a hand in those decisions. It's not just a resource, it's home. That's why we gotta take good care of it, and that's why we choose to do it. We're here at Trees for Tomorrow, where students like you are having an immersive experience in the outdoors. Well, at Trees for Tomorrow, right now, we have an awesome program happening. It's called Natural Resources Careers Exploration Week. 
basically what it is, is we have a group of high school students from all over the Midwest come together here on our campus and experience various careers in natural resources. So what we do is we provide them with opportunities to meet and study with natural resource professionals in the field. They'll share their profession, they'll tell them what school they went to, their experiences, and everything that they have done to get to where they are today. We were started in 1944 really as a tree planting organization. That was the original mission to help reforest the Great Lakes region. And then within a year of that happening, they started realizing that we needed to educate more than landowners. So that became um, education programs for high school students and for teachers, and then that just continued on uh, for decades to, and continues today. I feel it's essential for places like Trees for Tomorrow to exist in our community because not every child has access to environmental education. And that the First Nations people, that was their initial philosophy. The seven generations, sustainability, thinking ahead, that everything that you do, you need to do, do in foresight of the future generations that follow you. And it's my hope that we can empower our youth to stand up and take action and be the change agents to make our environment there for the next seven generations. organizations have provided funding for this Into the Outdoors television series.